Now in this video, I'm going to take you through the milling process, starting with a log, doing a little bit of chainsaw work. I'll take my eventual bowl blank in on the bandsaw and show you how I cut that. And at the very end of the video, around 28 minutes in, I'll have a little bit more footage uh, cutting another log with my chainsaw, and that's always fun to watch. All right, well, I just took the end off this nice elm log to expose the grain, and mainly I need to look at the pith. So I'm going to draw this up and show you how I approach uh, cutting a log and milling it into a bowl blank. Now, the first thing I'm looking at is to have the same amount of wood on either side of the pith when I mill a bowl blank. And the best way to do that is with a compass or a divider. So I'm going to just set this to the center right there. Lock that in. And I'm going to just uh, make some marks on here. So right here, right here, indicate an equal distance from the pith. Now the next thing I want to do is take my chainsaw and just split this log. So if I go from this point to this point, I'll have the same amount of wood here. It'll be symmetrical and the same amount of wood over here uh, around the pith. All right, so I'm going to take a, a marker and I'm going to connect these two points right here and here. So we'll just draw this down the center. All right, so this bowl blank here and this bowl blank will be symmetrical based on where the pith is. Okay, I've got this line absolutely vertical. That'll make it a little bit easier to cut. I got the line marked on the top of my log so I can see that from the backside when I cut this. All right, there we go. All right, now, I did a pretty good job of following my line, even though I couldn't see it. So here's a bowl blank, a smaller one. Throw that down there. And this is my main blank. This is gonna be a nice bowl. It's probably gonna be five inches deep this way. So I'll show you some more work on the bandsaw, getting this ready to put on the lathe, milling a bowl blank. All right, now at the end of the video, I've got a little bit of more footage of uh, cutting up a log with a chainsaw. Right now, I'm gonna take you to my bandsaw. I've got a log that's been split, and this is typically how this is done. I've got uh, poster board uh, circles from 8 inches all the way up to 20, and I just use those as a template for cutting my my half log, and I've selected an 8 inch round poster board piece here, 
and that's going to be my template. That's the best fit for this particular little log. Not a very big bowl blank. Now I'm going to show you my process for cutting up a bowl blank from a half of a log. Now you can attach this little piece of poster board in this manner. You take a screw or a nail or something and just uh, pound it in there and then cut that round on the bandsaw. All right, now the first thing I'm going to do is true up at least one of the ends of this little log and uh, that will become clear. And the reason I do this will become clear in just a few minutes here. So I'm just cutting that square as possible because eventually I'm going to put that up on end and you'll see why I do that in just a second. Shut my bandsaw off, let it stop before I stick my hand in there. Very dangerous machine, so be careful. All right, so I'm cutting the other end and I'm speeding this up just a little bit. So I've got both ends squared up. And the next operation, I'm going to stand that log up on end and cut the bark away a little bit on that one side. You'll see that in just a second. All right, with my resaw fence set up, I'm going to just slab off a section on the bark side of this bowl blank. And I have a reason for doing this, so I use a push stick and just uh, take off an inch or so. Eventually this bark has to be removed anyway, so this is my process, providing I can get this underneath my 12 inch um, depth on my bandsaw. Now the next step in this operation is to cut this round on my bandsaw. <clears throat> I have my poster board circle lying flat on the bowl blank and I'm going to just take and mark the center which is important and then I'm going to just trace around the outside of the circumference of this circle and cut that on my bandsaw. And this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Uh, we're going to mill it on, we're going to cut this round on the lathe later on. So right now it doesn't matter all that much in my opinion. I know a lot of people use a circle cutting jig type approach, which is great. I just don't think it's all that critical that you do that. So... Keeping my hands clear of that blade. This wood is very wet, but it's still very hard. And I find that out when I'm cutting this later on. A little concerned about that knot on the lower part that you see right there. Not sure how this wood's going to react to that as it goes through the drying process. We shall find out. There we are. All right, we have taken our bowl blank. <laughs> We've taken our bowl blank from a log to a real bowl blank we can put on the lathe. All right. Now, before I do that, I want to mention something to you and show you another bowl that I started turning the other day and it's got a big crack in it right here. Okay. Um, I suspect this happened when this tree fell down. Okay, or was taken down. Sometimes this is called a ring shake. All right, or a wind shake sometimes when trees are out in the wind and they go back and forth and 
they actually split in some places. If this ever happens to you, stop. Don't turn this particular piece of wood. All right, so back to the project at hand. We have, oh, this uh, bowl blank is probably nine inches in diameter. Make a nice bowl. It's actually maybe four inches thick or deep. Let's put this on the lathe. I need to uh, drill a hole right in the center where this dot is, and I'm going to put it on a screw chuck. I am going to use a dedicated screw chuck that's on my spindle, on my lathe, and I'm going to just drill a hole. This is a drill bit I use. It's a dedicated bit, so I know that's going to fit. Got a little dot on the center there. All right, now, one little point of interest on this particular piece of wood, besides having a, a limb or a knot coming through it, so it's going to be a little bit tricky to save this, but we'll, we'll try. I cut this on the bandsaw a week ago, and what I did, I've got a little uh, refrigerator in my shop over here, and I actually put this in the freezer compartment. I've always wanted to try that. And I'll tell you what, it really did a pretty, pretty good job. I've got a little split right there, but that's, uh, that, that's where that pith of that limb is. Anyway, let's put this on the lathe and we'll do a little turning. All right, I'm gonna use my Sweet 16 Robust Lathe. It's plenty hefty. I've got a 3 8 inch screw chuck on this and I've got a, a spacer. Now, I always put a spacer on these because ordinarily you don't need that entire thread. So I'm going to turn my lathe on. Pretty slow. And if you think this is not safe, don't do it. And just uh, hold that up there and thread that on. Till it catches a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna lock my whoop. Lock my spindle and crank that on there. And I'm gonna try to turn this without the tail center support. I think I think this block of wood is gonna be fine without doing that. All right, now I'm just drawing the circle on my bowl blank and I'm just trying to locate the best height for my tool rest. And this procedure may not be necessary, but it's an easy way to do it and uh, probably fairly accurate. So I'm going to turn this bowl blank without the tail center support. I really don't think I need it. I think this is uh, secured on there very firmly with that dedicated screw. Now for me, using a screw chuck is maybe the most efficient, fastest, and safest way to start a bowl blank. I've got a 5 8 inch bowl gouge and I'm just truing up the very bottom of my blank. Now something that's very important, sometime during this process I need to identify and locate that center point. Right there I'm just uh, drawing in what is going to become the diameter of my spigot and I'm marking this on my vernier calipers and just verifying that I'm accurate. For this particular chuck, I need about a two and an eighth or two and a quarter inch diameter on my spigot. So I just continue to true up the bottom of my bowl blank. Very out of balance. So I'm, I'm not really cutting as much as I am scraping. 
And during this process, I try to speed my lathe up as much as possible, considering safety, of course. Okay, now you will notice that I added a glove on my left hand. The chips from this bowl blank are very sharp and painful. So, moving right along, I'm working my way around the lower corner of this bowl. Just trying to true it up a little bit so I can uh, turn a little bit more efficiently and use a push cut. Okay, now I am showing you an end view of my bowl blank. I've got the beginning of the spigot started here. And this uh, view gives you a little bit better perspective of how I'm approaching this bowl blank and trying to get it into some sort of a form, if you will, for my final shape. All right, we are moving right along. Now keep in mind that this is going to be a rough turn bowl blank. So eventually, as I uh, get closer to the final shape on this blank, I'm not too concerned about torn grain or how smooth the surface is. I usually just uh, kind of rip through these and uh, get them into some sort of a final form that I can seal and put away in shavings for a few months. And when I do that, I check it periodically to see if I've got any cracks or anything uh, going on that uh, shouldn't be there during the drying process. All right, this is a much better view of my tool and the approach I'm taking. I have my handle lowered way down. This is probably considered a shearing cut. I do have the bevel rubbing at this point. All right, now I need to refine my spigot just a little bit, make it deeper. Now I found my spindle gouge and I'm going to continue forming my spigot. Uh, this spindle gouge has a little bit more acute bevel angle. It's a little bit smaller so I can get in there and form my, my spigot a little bit easier. Make a cut along the side of my spigot and then kind of pull it back and flatten off that area. Oh, and one more thing. I can't forget that little uh, center point down there. I've uh, indicated that with a pencil and I'm going to take a skew chisel and just form a little indentation there that's going to be very important later on when I reverse chuck this bowl. I never brought my tail center up so I didn't have it in there to begin with. Alright, a little bit more work on the shape of my bowl. And even though this is a rough turn bowl, this is important at this stage because you're sort of uh, committed at this point. Whatever shape you come up with, you can't change it a great deal later on when you uh, put this bowl blank back on the lathe in four or five months and finish turn it. Now I've been working my way up to this point where I could do a proper push cut, so I'm going to continue up to a point on the side of this bowl. And then I'm going to move my tool into a proper cutting position, a push cut right here. Got my bevel rubbing. And I just continue that around to the top of the bowl. Uh, one thing you need to be really concerned about, and you can't see it very well here, but the the top edge right there is very sharp and it's important that you Take a second and uh, just scrape that away. And I remove it right here with a little push cut. Okay, I'm using my Vicmark 120 chuck. It's got some big hefty jaws in there.
Not sure exactly what size those jaws are. I usually put a two and a quarter inch tenon on my, my rough turn bowls. And the idea is this tenon has got to be a little bit larger because I'm going to rough turn this, let it dry, and this will go oval. So I need to have enough wood there to make it round later on. I'm going to measure this to see what that is. Okay, my calipers. So I've got probably two and three eighths inches. All right. Let's put this in the chuck jaws. As you can see, my my spigot is fairly large, but that's okay. I need that. And it fits really nicely in there. Put a little pressure right in the center. And before I tighten that, I'm going to just give it a little spin and it's running very true. Yeah, tighten that up a little bit more. All right. Get my tool rest in the right position. Now I'm taking a 5 8 inch bowl gouge and facing off the, the top of my bowl, making that level, in preparation for hollowing this. There's a different angle. Just making that level so I can make some plunge cuts and uh, remove the wood from the inside of this elm bowl. I mentioned someplace it's wet wood, but it's uh, still fairly hard. It's going to be a pretty bowl. Here I'm marking with a pencil my intended thickness for the rim and the wall thickness, I should say. This bowl is right at nine inches. So I need about 10% of that diameter for my wall thickness. Make it too thick and you got problems. Make it too thin and you won't have enough wall thickness to complete your bowl after it's dried. So I'm making some plunge cuts here and this is one of my methods for doing this. I'm trying to achieve a little bit more depth as I hollow out this uh, bowl blank. Once my tool enters the wood, I rotate it to the left for more of a back cut. Very, very pretty wood. Now I'm going to uh, what might be considered a bottom feeder. This has probably got a 55 or 60 degree nose angle. And this will allow me to turn the corner down there in the very bottom of that bowl blank. The tool I was using previously had a 40 degree nose angle and I certainly couldn't uh, turn that very tight corner down there that I'm doing right now. Checking the depth, a little more depth on the very bottom. So I continue to uh, remove wood from that corner. That can be kind of a problem area. If you don't take enough wood off down there, the bowl is not going to be able to dry out properly and it needs to move a little bit and warp through that drying process. <laughs> All right, I am very close to having this little bowl rough turned. It's just right at eight inches, maybe a little bit less. 
This dimension, um, I'm not sure. It should be 10% of the diameter. This may be closer to an inch. I may take that down a little bit. So I'm measuring this with a couple different devices. This one basically measures the, the thickness at the bottom. Okay, I put that on there. Now one thing I've got to take into account is the thickness of the spigot or the tenon. That adds a little bit of thickness down there. So I'm going to take my Andre Martel calipers, make sure my wall thickness is, is even all the way through there. And that really looks pretty good on the, the base of that. So, all right, now I've got a negative rake scraper and I really don't need to make the inside as smooth, but it's a good time to practice with a scraper. So I will just uh, take a little bit of this wall thickness off here. I think it's a little bit too thick. Turn the speed down just a little bit. This is a rough turn bowl. So the outside of this is pretty much where I want that with the profile. I like that. And if I can save this with this knot in here, I'll be doing a good job. All right, I'm gonna seal this really well, put it in some shavings. That's the end of the video. Thank you very much. From a log to a rough turn bowl. Okay. So please like my videos, share them, comment, and I will talk to you later.